This is the Ask Foleschini podcast, where the modern economy is discussed from a skeptic's perspective. Mr. Foleschini helps you distinguish what is sustainable in our economy and what isn't. Not everything that glitters is gold, and not all mud is dirty. The podcaster Mr. Foleschini provides no-nonsense advice. He had it all, lost it all, went bankrupt multiple times, and is now attempting to come back from zero with sustainable growth. There are numerous coaches and preachers on the internet that preach about positive thinking and how life is all roses if you just care to see it that way. Well, Mr. Foleschini is definitely not one of them. We recommend you ask Foleschini to keep it real. He discusses the darker side of the current economic reality, the side that's more important for your personal and business finance. His first intention is to help you keep what you already have. Not to be a complete party pooper, Mr. Foleschini will also hint at the earning opportunities in the economy today. In order to please the almighty algorithm, please like, share, and subscribe. And now it's time to start taking notes. The mic goes to the podcaster, the one and only Mr. Foleschini. Welcome to the Ask Foleschini podcast with a guest. I'm proud to present Brandon Leibowitz from Los Angeles, California. Brandon has been involved with digital marketing since 2007. He shares his knowledge about search engine optimization, social media marketing, and Google Ads. Brandon, please tell us about yourself and how you started your business. What is your story? I first got involved with digital after I got my degree in business marketing. After I graduated from college, got my first job out of school, and first job was helping a company out with their digital marketing, which... I didn't really know much about because I got my degree in business marketing in 2007 and they didn't really teach you much about online marketing then. So I was helping out this company doing their digital and they said, don't worry that you don't know much. We're going to take you to classes and workshops and learn alongside with you and helped out with their SEO, did social media, helped out with paid ads, did some email marketing, helped write product descriptions. Like I would take pictures of products. I was kind of doing it all for them. And after working there for a few months, <clears throat> just kind of realized that Everyone's probably going to have a website in the future. This was back in 2007. And that everything I mentioned works to get traffic, but SEO is a way to get free traffic. So I thought, why spend money on paid ads when you could get up there for free? So over the years, I worked at different advertising agencies as a director of SEO. And before work or after work or on my lunch breaks, I would work on my own company and built it up to where I would eventually quit my job and focus solely on this and been doing that ever since. And just helping people tap into that free traffic. Uh, that's great. So you have a lot of experiences uh, with search engine optimization. You mentioned that search engine optimization is a way to drive free traffic to the web page. I would like to know, is that still possible? Is there any other way possible than registering with uh, Google uh, so that the page is registered with Google? Uh, let's say include a bit of Google Analytics on the page and then um, start uh, uh, jumping the ranks. I, I, is that how it works? Um, Google looks at your coding. So what we see in what Google sees is different. Google or any search engine just looks in your coding for keywords in different places to help them better understand what those what that page is. So they can't really read images or videos. It's all text. That's what the search engines look at is the more text you have on each page, the easier it is for them to read, understand, and know what keywords you're targeting. But unfortunately, they don't really care what keywords you put on the website because they don't trust anybody without what are called backlinks. Google wants this or search engines want to see other websites talking about you. The more websites that talk about you, the more trust Google gives to you. And then they look at those keywords on your website, but it doesn't really work the other way around. You got to build that trust in. The backlink is a clickable link from another website that points to yours. So let's say you're reading an article on like Forbes.com and in there it says Brandon Leibowitz and you click on it and then it goes to my website, then I'd be getting a backlink from Forbes.com. So backlinks, very important. Having good quality content are really important. And there's over 200 ranking factors that go into Google's algorithm and it's constantly changing every single day. So I always tell people it's like a puzzle. There's a lot of pieces to it, but you want to kind of focus on the bigger pieces and bigger pieces are definitely the content on your website, the, meaning text and the backlinks, having good quality backlinks that point to your website. 
Uh, what, what do you think about using, for example, Wikipedia as a way to uh, to get backlinks? Because uh, Wikipedia has uh, high ranking, and if your product or uh, yourself is mentioned in Wikipedia, uh, is, is that good for uh, the you mentioned backlinks or for for uh, the search results? Uh, so yeah, the more websites you're on, the better off you're going to be as long as they're relevant. So if you're let's say a skateboarding company and you get on the skateboard Wikipedia page, that will be good. But unfortunately, there's this tag that Google made a lot 10 years ago where a lot of websites like Wikipedia were getting spammed. So Google said, all right, we see everyone's just adding backlinks in here just for SEO. It's losing the quality. You could put this tag on your website saying no follow. And this will mean don't count these backlinks for SEO. So unfortunately, most websites have the no follow tag, meaning mm -hmm. those backlinks don't count for SEO, Google ignores them. So Wikipedia, like any social media, anywhere where it's too easy to get a backlink, it's gonna be no follow most likely where they're not gonna count for SEO. There is some questions saying like, all right, it's not gonna count as a backlink, but it still mentions your company URL. So it counts as a citation, which helps out a little bit, but it's not the same as the backlink. Unfortunately, those Sites get blocked, but yeah, sites that are authoritative, like the bigger the website, the more SEO value it's going to pass on. So if you get on a Forbes, Wall Street Journal, Huffington Post, Entrepreneur, New York Times, LA Times, like the bigger the site, the more SEO value it's going to pass on. But also be wary that most of these sites do have the no follow tag because they don't want to just pass on that SEO value. So those backlinks aren't going to really have that impact that they used to. You really want to go for sites that are related to what you're doing. So relevancy is really important. The more related it is to you, the better. So Wikipedia is just kind of about everything, which is okay because there's pages about almost every topic, but it's not just hyper-focused. Like let's say you're a dentist, you'd probably want to be on sites that are related to health, wellness, doctors, medicine, stuff like that. So getting on more niche-related sites is going to be better long-term. Uh, so if I understand correctly, it's not just about... Uh hashtags, uh, meta tags, keywords uh, is also, the, the category is also really important uh, as far as backlinks are concerned. Yep, so relevancy and authoritativeness are the two things that Google looks at. So it's not the number of backlinks, it's the quality of the backlinks. And the quality backlink to Google is really just a website that's related to what you're doing and authoritative. So the more related it is, the better. And the more authoritative, meaning the bigger the site is, the more SEO trust and value is going to be passed on. But I would look at relevancy first. Relevancy is really number one. Mm -hmm. uh, how uh, How is with timing? Uh, do the older links get uh, removed from the search engine rankings or they stay there forever? Um, I mean, as long as that website doesn't go down, then that backlink is there. If you got a backlink on the New York Times and it was from an article 10 years ago, as long as that page is still up on the New York Times, then you're still getting that backlink. But if they take that page down, then it would be gone. But it's really up to the website. So as long as the website keeps it up, you're not going to lose that backlink. Uh, we, we talked about, so you started that search engine is a way to, uh, optimization is a way uh, to get free traffic to your uh, web page. What, what do you think is ra ranking in Google any better if uh, the, the same company or the same web page would purchase uh, paid ads on Google. Yeah, the more real estate you take up on that first page of Google, the more likely someone is going to click on you. So having the paid ads, they're always going to show at the top. People click on the ads not knowing their ads. So that will get you more traffic. You have to pay for them. So that could be quite expensive. So that's where you just got to make sure you're getting a positive return on your ad spend for all the ads that you're putting out there. But other than that, I mean, the more visibility, it's not going to hurt. So more exposure, more visibility is always a good thing. I wouldn't say hold back unless it's out of your budget or you're not making your return on ad spend. You're spending more money than you're bringing in, then maybe cut those ads out. Okay. So so it's not a must. It's just uh, if it's uh, economically feasible, then it's okay. If it's not, then there are other ways to to optimize. Yeah. Okay. Um, then... Uh, how important is Google in a sense of search engine optimization? Is there any other search engine that is relevant in, in these times? Well, there's tons of different search engines out there, but 
it just matters who your audience is and where are they. So you could use tools like well, analytical tools like Google Analytics to track who your visitors are and where they're coming from. And you could see where they're coming from. Are they coming from search engines? If so, which ones are they coming from? Google, Bing, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, Yandex. There's thousands, tens of thousands of them out there. But the one that brings in the most traffic is Google nowadays. We'll have to see mm-hmm. what happens in the future. But Google just brings in the majority of the traffic. They bring in about say like 20 to 80% of the traffic. Bing will bring about 1%. Yahoo might bring 1%. Then the rest is going to come from like social media or paid ads or email marketing or people just typing your website in directly. And this is me looking at hundreds, probably thousands of websites over the past 15 years that this is what I always see. I've never really seen any other search engine bringing more traffic than Google. So basically all others are basically, except for maybe a niche markets, they are just irrelevant. So uh, a business person should focus on on Google uh, to to optimize. Is that correct? For the most part, I mean, if you're a big corporation and you're getting ten thousand people to your website every single day, then one percent is actually a big number. So, mm-hmm. but if you're a small mom and pop shop and you're only getting twenty or fifty people to your website, then that one percent is not the biggest deal. But it does help out, and I mean, they are growing because people aren't using Google as much. I mean, people still use Google all the time, but all these new search engines and like privacy and things like that are kind of gaining some traction, but still they're so tiny. It barely brings in traffic. Okay. So basically other search engines are just relevant for big companies that have big um, turnover and uh, big traffic. Uh, the small business people should just target uh, Google to, to optimize. Yep. And if you optimize for Google, you should be good across the board because Google is much more sophisticated. So if you optimize for Google, it's not exactly the same, but it's similar what the search engines are looking for. They're all looking for keywords, bag links, age of your website, authoritativeness, trustworthiness, all these kind of variables. It's a little different how they all look at them because they have machine learning and AI where it just kind of learns by itself, but it's similar for the most part what they're looking for. Uh-huh. Okay. How do you handle, uh, you mentioned that it's also important how the web page is built with uh, meta text and uh, the relevant content. How how do you uh, handle the, now we have a challenge that a lot of platforms offer generic pages and you just uh, direct your domain to that. Uh, is there any special way to how to optimize this type of uh, web pages? Mm-hmm. A web page is a web page. You want to optimize it the same. It doesn't matter if it's a product page, a service page, and a about us page, contact us page, home page. You want to make sure you optimize it the same way, like the title tag. I mean, it gets kind of technical. It's a little tricky to explain without showing, but like a title tag or mm-hmm. a description, your images need descriptive file names with alt tags. You need to have header tags and schema markup on the website you need to interlink your pages together and have a good site structure and hierarchy and those are kind of like the basic foundations it's a little tricky to explain i do have videos that Mm -hmm. are on youtube that i show step by step how to do all that because it's different if you're on shopify or wordpress or wix or squarespace or have a custom cms it's all gonna be a little bit different where you edit that coding but essentially google is just looking at your coding and you help them read and understand and know what that page is about and Really, it comes down to text because everything gets stripped down to text and coding. And if you don't have text on your website that describes what that page is about, it's going to be hard for the search engines to really know, understand, and rank you for the correct keywords. Uh, do you help uh, your uh, clients also prepare adequate text so that uh, the the search engine would um, would recognize them? Yeah, no. I always tell them they should write the content on their website, but if they're too busy or don't have enough time or they're an e-commerce website with 5,000 products, they might not be able to write content for every single page. So that's where I have copywriters that could come in and help write content. And then we go in and optimize that content to make sure it's SEO friendly, has all the right keywords and the correct places and has everything that Google's looking for, breaking it down into sections and having headers and having images and videos in that content that match and describe that keyword that you're targeting. Mm-hmm. Um, one, one more thing that I'm really uh, interested in is some people do check what are the most um, 
search keywords on Google, and then they use these keywords uh, in their text. Is that something that you would recommend? Well, you want to find keywords that are related to your business that have buyer intent. So you want to make sure that anytime you put keywords on your website, that these keywords are going to hold, ultimately lead to a conversion, whether it's a phone call, an email, a sale. So you want to have long tail keywords, keywords that are usually two or more words. The more words, the more intent behind that search to actually want to use your product or service. So that's why I always focus on is getting those conversions. You don't want to just use trending keywords just to get traffic because that's actually going to do much more harm than good because a lot of that traffic is going to go to your website and then hit that back button saying, this is not what I was looking for. This is just getting me here to get me here. It's just like social media. You could use all these trending hashtags to get more followers, but mm -hmm. what are these followers from like throwback Thursday or motivational Monday? They're not going to do much if they're not related to your business. So it's all about relevancy. The more relevant they are, the more targeted they are, the more likely they are going to convert and ultimately we want conversions. We don't care about traffic. Traffic really means nothing. We want phone mm -hmm. calls or conversion sales leads so search engine also um helps uh with uh improving uh conversion rate is that correct well yeah you get more traffic and if your website's optimized for conversions then you get more conversions but seo or just getting traffic to your website it's not going to get you more conversions like people could spend money on paid ads and they could be spending a thousand dollars a day on facebook ads or google ads and if the website's not optimized or they're doing the wrong things, it's not going to get conversions. So your website is how you get those conversions. That's where you got to optimize your website to get conversions because I've had clients that come to me and say, nobody's filling out my forms. I'm not getting any leads. We check their website. The forms don't work or like e-commerce have people that say they don't get sales. We look at their shopping cart. It doesn't work. So it's like little things like that. Like I can get you all this traffic, but if your shopping cart doesn't work, we're not going to get those conversions off, unfortunately. So Got to make sure your website is built for conversions. A lot of people just build websites that look nice, but that doesn't do any good. You got to build websites that are optimized for conversions. That's number one. Do, do you also consult uh, your clients how how to how to um, build this uh, website that will convert, and um, or do you even have uh, subcontractors that can or companies that you would recommend? To use when uh, people would like to optimize their uh, web page for conversion. No, I help the website owners. Usually, they have website website developers that they're working with that built their website because usually they come to me with the website that's already built. So I work with the web developer or programmer, and we'll make changes and I'll give recommendations on how to just maximize that the value of the website because almost ninety nine percent of the time, every website I see needs to be tweaked a little bit to just really maximize conversions to have like a call to action at the top of your website. Don't make people scroll down for that call to action, have a value proposition, let people know what's in it for me by visiting or using your product or service. Maybe have a video at the top or a couple bullet points. So it's like easy to scan. Don't have like a bunch of text, make it like easy for people to quickly scan, see what's on the page and hopefully follow through with that call to action where it's maybe your phone number's there or you have that form right there, or you have the add to cart button right there. So they don't have to scroll because 70% of people will never scroll down on a website. So whatever you see on the screen is called above the fold. Below the fold is once you start scrolling or swiping and the you know, majority of people will not scroll down on a website, which is kind of strange, but you have to think to yourself, like often you even scroll down to the bottom of any website. Most people will never scroll to the bottom of a website. You might scroll a little bit, but most people don't really go down. But Google reads top to bottom. So you got to make sure that the bottom of your website is where you really optimize it for search engines. The top is more for people, more visual optimization. And then below that is more optimized for search engines, having a lot of text and content and keyword rich content in there. So if I understood correctly, the uh, simple advice would be uh, call for action on top of the page, uh, not too, too much to read so that people can get um, your uh, value proposition immediately, uh, if possible, video or something to attract and use the lower part of the web page for uh, search engine optimization. Mm, yeah, that is the best way to do it. Uh, okay, great. Um, let's move to economics of search engine optimization. Uh, what do you think would be an adequate price or how do you price your, your, your job? Do you charge by hour? Do, do you have uh, packages? Uh, how do you go about it? 
Oh, so I always do a free website analysis to anybody because it's not a one size fits all. SEO is different depending on how many pages you have on your website. If you're an e-commerce website with 5,000 products versus a doctor or a restaurant might only have like five or 10 pages on their website. So it's a lot different depending on how many pages you have. Also, what keywords you're targeting, the more competitive those keywords are, the more time it's going to take to get those rankings. Essentially, it all comes down to backlinks. So I have to look at your backlinks and look at your competitors' backlinks and analyze them and figure out, all right, how many backlinks do you have versus the competitors? And how much time is this going to take to fill that differentiator and get you up there? So it's not really a one size fits all. It's usually done package wise because I mean, you could do hourly too, but hourly, it's going to vary so much depending on, again, like how old your website is, how many backlinks you have versus competitors, how many pages. So it's a little tricky. And I always offer a free website analysis just to really help out and figure out, let's strategize and get you a game plan that's going to work for your business. So can we talk about the prices or you would uh, write, uh, like to avoid that? No. I mean, if you have well, a website, I can look at it, but it's tough to just say this is how much. I mean, it might cost a thousand, two thousand per month. It could be less than that. It could be more than that. It really, really varies just depending on your website the, and how many backlinks you have versus mm-hmm. the competitors. If you're a brand new website and your competitors have a thousand backlinks, it's going to take a lot of time versus if you're a website that's been around and let's say you have 500 backlinks, your competitors have a thousand. It's going to be a lot easier, not easier, but quicker for me to get you that traffic, get you those rankings. So it really just depends on how old your website is versus the competitors. Cause so what matters is not sorry. Mm-hmm. The minimum amount that someone should budget for search engine optimization for a simple page would be about 1000 per month. Is that correct? Yeah, could be a little bit less, could be more, just depending on how competitive it is. Like if you don't have any competition, then it'll be really easy to get you up there. But if you have competition, then it's going to be a lot tougher. Okay. How much search engine optimization depends on technology and how much on the budget? It just matters on just building trust up to Google. That's really what matters is getting Google to trust you. The more Google trusts you, the more they're going to give you rankings and you've got to figure out how to get them to trust you. And by having an older website, having good quality content on your website, having good blog, having good social media presence, having good quality backlinks helps Google trust you more. But trust is really what matters is getting Google to trust you. So search engine optimization is... A lot about building trust, if I understand correctly. Getting search engines to trust you. And then once you got search engines to trust you, you're going to get traffic. And then once people get to your website, now you got to get people to trust you. And that's where what we talk about, the conversion rate optimization, because mm-hmm. you got to optimize your website for search engines, but you also have to optimize your website for people, for humans, because once they get to, to your website, you need to make sure they actually convert, because unfortunately, half the traffic that comes to your website is probably going to leave immediately that bounce rate. So that's why you got to keep yourself top of mind and figure out how to keep people on your website. Okay. There is a lot of free content available on search engine optimization. Can business people do damage if they try to do it on their own? Is there, is there something like a bad promotion or um, so, some moves that, you, uh, that someone can do that would damage search engine optimization uh, in the future? No, there's a lot of things you could do that could do more harm than good. But I mean, as long as you're not doing anything that seems spammy, you should be fine. But the biggest thing is like content has to be original content. Can't copy content from one page to another. It has to be 100% unique. But the backlinks, if you build the wrong type of backlinks, like if you got a bunch of backlinks from sites related to like pornography, that could actually do more harm than good. Or you're getting a bunch of backlinks from other countries that are not related to what you're doing. So that would throw off the search engines and kind of confuse them. So it's all about quality, not quantity. And just try to think logically, like if you're a dentist and you're in Los Angeles and you're getting backlinks from like websites in China or Russia, that's going to look a little weird to Google. I mean, if you're a dentist in Los Angeles, you could get other websites in the United States linked to you, but it would make sense for them to be more localized, the more localized the more relevant it becomes. So just try to think relevantly of like how a search engine works because they're just algorithms. They're just programmed and people program them to think specific ways and look for different signals that are going to help them out. But just take everything with a grain of salt that you read online and test it out before you really apply it to your main website, just in case it might do any negative harm. You could always buy a 
dot info website for a couple dollars on GoDaddy or something like that to test on before you try testing on your main website. Okay, so if I understood correctly, in spam should be avoided, all content should be original, and uh, backlinks should be as local as possible in order to avoid uh, making harm to the web page. Well, there's thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of other things to avoid, but those are just some uh, simple ones that a lot of people would probably unfortunately do like don't hide your content and font size 0 0.001 on your website and match the background or don't have like numbers in your URL it looks ugly or have dashes in the URL, but all these little things that search engines are looking at. Okay. Uh, do you have any calculation? What is the return on investment on, on search engine optimization? It really varies depending on how many people search for that keyword every single month. So we got to look at how much traffic you're getting, what the conversion rate is. Can, can, uh, you, what's can you give us a ballpark figure for an industry? That is tricky. I have to look at each one. It's going to be different. Mm -hmm. I'm really yeah, happy that to get one, that out. <laughs> yeah, that one's going to be different. That one's, mm -hmm. you mean like a conversion rate, maybe like 1% to 3% conversion rate, but ROI, that's where you got to really tie in. How much are you making versus what's your profit margins? And I'll look at a lot of other variables. Mm -hmm. uh, do you do a performance based deals with your clients? No, because I can't control the website. So, like I said at the beginning, like I could get you all this traffic to your website, but if your website, the shopping cart doesn't work, I'm doing all this work for you. I'm getting you all this traffic and then they're not checking out. It's not on me. Like I don't build websites, I help with the marketing, which I definitely give recommendations to all that, but unfortunately I don't have full control of websites. So I would definitely do it for my own websites, but for other people, if I don't have full control of it, then it's not on me. If I get you all this traffic, but it's not converting, then mm -hmm. it's the website and then it's going to look negative on me. And then I'm going to not get compensated for all my time and hard work to get you up there. Just to realize that your website is not going to convert, unfortunately. Okay. So basically, um, your job is to get to get people on the web page, and then the client's job is to convert them from visitors uh, to engaged visitors to buyers, for example. Which I help out with all that, but I don't have full control of websites. So I give recommendations like we should have this here, have this call to action. You should probably write an ebook to get people's email addresses or create a video masterclass, stuff like that, where it's like, all right, you got to do all the work now and I'll give you all these recommendations, but you have to take the action and do it to get people into your funnel, to get them to convert because you're actually going to get someone to your website that's going to buy immediately. You have to lead them in, warm them up, get them from just browsing to actual converting. And that takes time. You have to have like multiple touch points, running paid ads, doing social media, doing email marketing, doing as, having as many touch points as possible because I believe it's like five touch points before someone starts to even trust you a little bit. Mm -hmm. So basically what you're saying is that search engine optimization is not uh, a magic trick that will solve all the problems, uh, but it's a very important puzzle in the whole business process. Yep, unfortunately there are no tricks. You could do social media, you could do paid ads, you could do email marketing, but they all work much better together versus standalones. Okay. Let's talk a bit about the future. How do you feel that the search engine optimization can help certain company or uh, not specific company fight the recession? Do you think there, there, there is a fight that search engine can help you fight the recession, get the new clients in um, and uh, at least uh, balance a bit out the, the potential loss of uh, turnover? Mm -hmm. SEO helps people get more traffic. So it depends on how many people search for your keywords. So you could use tools like the Google Keyword Planner. It's a free tool from Google that will show how many people actually search for your keyword every single month. So you could see, all right, if I'm not ranking for this keyword, but this is what my service is. And if 10,000 people search for it every single month, I'm losing out on potentially 10,000 new leads to my business or sales. So you got to look at it from that point of view is how many people are searching for my keywords. And if I'm not there, then... My competitors are there taking that traffic away from me. Okay. 
So um, one of the recommendation uh, should be use Google uh, Keyword Planner to see if uh, if you're you're getting the right uh, uh, visitors to your web page to find the right keywords to target to see how many people search for that keyword. So Google Keyword Planner shows how many people search for that keyword every single month. Mm -hmm. Great. How do you see the future of search engine optimization with ChatGPT? A lot of videos on YouTube is available and also a lot of articles that search engine will change completely when uh, ChatGPT recommends all the improvements and uh, and or even the that uh, writes a bot that will improve uh, search engine optimization. Uh, what, what do you think about uh, this? I mean, ever since I started doing SEO back in 2007, there's been tools like ChatGPT that will write content for you. That's 100% original. So this is nothing new. Google made in 2011 the Panda algorithm update where they're fighting for quality content meaning it's original content, it's written by people, not these bots. And back in 2007, it's pretty obvious when it was written by, or just these article spinners that would just spin content and find synonyms and it would look original, but it wouldn't really read properly. Nowadays, ChatGPT reads much better, but still you kind of tell that it's written by AI and they're talking about watermarking it. So anytime anyone gets any AI, AI written content, it's going to have a watermark in it. So the search engines will know this is AI written content and search engine said they'll penalize you for having AI written content. So it might work in the short run, like it might work for a couple months, but in the long term, if Google catches you doing these things, they're going to penalize you. And they always said they pride like quality. I mean, content is number one to Google. Content is the most important thing and they don't want bots to write it. They want humans to write the content. You got to write content for people. So if you're using chat GPT, it might work short term in the long run. It potentially might get you penalized from Google because they are constantly looking to update their algorithm. I don't know how they could differentiate chat GPT versus human written content because it's kind of tough to tell. You'd still kind of tell right now that it's written by AI. There's little patterns you could pick up, but in the future, like five years from now, when it gets really, really good, it's going to be really interesting to see how that works out. Okay, because I'm really skeptical about chat GPT, especially um, it, it's not a universal solution for everything. That is why I, I wanted your opinion. I, I, and I see that we have a similar opinion that it, it might be something, uh, a buzzword or even trend, but uh, long term, um, it, it will have to prove itself before we say it's good. Yeah. Uh, so, Brandon, what would be one most important thing for business people to understand about search engine optimization what, what what would be one thing that you would like that they take from this interview that it takes time unfortunately it's not immediate so you just gotta be patient and keep sending the right signals to google because what takes time is getting google to trust you google doesn't trust any website so you got to build that trust up and that's what takes the most time with seo it's not immediate yeah, build up that trust. But as long as you keep working at it and building it up and building it up and building it up over time, you're going to see your traffic start moving up. But got to be patient. Don't get discouraged if you don't move up. It could take six months. It could take a year. Sometimes it could take much longer. Sometimes it could be much quicker, just depending on how competitive those keywords are. But just be patient with it and don't get discouraged. Thank you, Brandon, for all these wonderful insights and for being my guest tonight. I will include all the links where they can find you and uh, your offers on search engine optimization in the description below. And I will end this uh, podcast uh, with, with, with that. Thank you again. Thank you for having me on. Thank you, Mr. Faleschini, for this outstanding podcast. And thank you for listening to the Ask Faleschini podcast until the end. Mr. Faleschini would love to hear your feedback in the comments. And don't forget, if you want to know, ask Faleschini or listen to the Ask Faleschini podcast. In order to please the almighty algorithm, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.